Today, we are pleased to introduce our state representative, Trom Wynn, and her significant other, Nate Powers. And they are going to prepare a typical Vietnamese dish called Vietnamese chicken curry. As we go along, we are going to learn more about Trom and Nate. All right, so uh, as Joan introduced, we're doing Vietnamese chicken curry. It's called Gari Ga in Vietnamese. And Nate is actually the main chef today. And if you can get started with the onions, that would be great. We're using Vidalia onions um, because they are sweeter and we prefer them to be sweet. But you can really use any type of onions. We really like onions, so we use a really big one. If you don't use a small one, you can cut it out of the recipe entirely if you need to, but um, it's better with onions, trust me. Obviously, everyone knows how to uh, you know, peel an onion, but we want to make sure you see uh, how the size that he cuts it because the size, you don't want to do it too small because you don't want it to disintegrate in the, the chicken soup or, cur um, or stew rather. And so we're going to cut it a little bit bigger um, so that, uh, you know, it can keep um, its shape. Is this more of a stew? It is. It's yeah. more of a stew. And it is, um, it has a lot of different things. So I cut it three ways going across and then yep. kind of like. And then bigger chunks. Bigger than that? Yep, that's great. I love the smell of those I love it, yeah. Vidalia onions are great. You want to make sure you see the size. It's a um, pretty good, good sized chunk here. So that, that's it. And now we'll also show you how to cut the chicken so that you know the size. Um, this is a very popular dish in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam was, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier in our conversation, Joan, we, uh, we were colonized by the French for 100 years. And so a lot of our cuisines are very much French influenced. So we tend to use some of the influences of French in our cuisines, but a lot of the, the recipe you can see is like Vietnamese based and I'll tell you more. So Nate will- First I, I want to cut across this joint here. You prefer to use the chicken with the bone in? Yes. Yeah, and get, the reason for that? It's for more flavor, okay. basically. And then, uh, so I cut it right through here and then this will be one piece to go in. So one lucky person will get this big piece here. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, uh, actually you need to cut the, some of the extra skin off, some of the, a little bit of the fat. So when you, you buy this, are you buying a half a chicken? Or? So these are chicken thighs. Yeah, I bought a whole chicken leg. Oh, the, a whole oh, chicken the leg. leg. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he bought three whole chicken legs, and then I actually bought some thighs on top of it for more meat, which I already cut up before. Oh, yeah. But we prefer the the leg because mm -hmm. we like darker meat, and, I do too. and it's yeah. more flavorful. And then I'll cut one across here. It's kind of down the middle almost, but then we left with this bone here. So Tron's going to assist me. <laughs> so this is what we usually do at home too. So I kind of start it. Actually, I got oh, it. Oh, you did it. But usually, if it's harder than that, I would just do that <laughs> to cut through the bone. <laughs> yeah. But he did it. So we're good. So, so here's the chicken. Um, uh, and I cut this one more time. So here's, here's kind of the chunks you want. Yeah, it looks good. Big, English nice, hearty, hearty chunks. Yep. Yeah. We don't want it too small again because yeah, it shrinks. Great. And Are you leaving the skin on to it? Um, yeah. We do. We do. All right. So we've going to heat up the oil real quick on, on the oven and then we're going to add the onions and garlic, about th three or four cloves of garlic depending on what you like. So let this uh, cook a little bit and then we we'll, can add the chicken immediately after. We're going to brown the chicken first and pull the chicken out and then we'll continue on with the soup. So we're going to saute the onions until it's a little bit cooked down it's just a little bit and then uh, We'll add the chicken. We used, um, for the chicken, we used three legs, three whole legs, mm -hmm. and three pieces of chicken thighs, three or four pieces of chicken thigh. I think that should be enough for this pot. You have a bigger family, obviously, um, but more, in, but we don't want to put too much in because we also have vegetables, that sure. so we want to throw in there. Well. How, that looks like a lot of chicken. How many people would you have? Um, <laughs> Nate, Nate, I eat a lot. Definitely. You eat the toy, you eat all that? No, 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 <laughs> not in one meal. But also we, we do for meal prep too. So, you know, we can cook once and then oh, we'll yeah, use it. Yeah. It's actually better the second day. 
Of course, like, like most things. Exactly. Yeah. Like most foods. So we usually eat, you know, eat a bowl yeah. once done, and then we'll pack it for lunch um, the next day. Maybe two. Oh. <laughs> but and then you know, in Vietnamese cuisine, a lot of it's family style. So sometimes we'll make this and invite the family over to eat. So it really depends yeah, right. on, um, or you know. <laughs> So now I let it cook for about a couple of minutes, and I'm going to add the chicken now. So the chicken's ready to come in. We're going to try to brown this as best we can, and then. And do try to spread everything out. This helps. Does two things: helps the chicken cook faster, and also. With a, I feel like it's a little bit more flavor. Mm. Uh, it kind of renders some of the fat off the chicken. Traditionally, do you serve it with noodles or rice? Uh, so you can eat it with rice. A, a, a lot, um, for many Vietnamese cuisines, we use rice. But for my particular family, because we're from the city Saigon, we like to use French bread. French bread. And why is that? Because we were influenced by the French. And it's a preference. We like to dip the bread into the stew. Um, this is served in many Vietnamese restaurants in Vietnam that way too, mm -hmm. with the French baguette. Um, and so we prefer it that way simply because uh, we like the flavor. But you know, I actually like this with vermicelli too. It's good. Oh, yeah, the yeah, white yeah. noodles, um, we tend to do that. So they're very versatile. Um, and while the chicken's cooking and Joan's helping us over there, we're going to try to peel oh, this. But I think I'm going to peel the um, Ginger first, because I think you can throw it in there for it to make it to yeah. more of the fragrant. Um, and it's just peeling it. This smells so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right? This smells. You don't have to use the whole piece. I'm only just going to use a little bit of this. And then you just cut it, and then small thin slices. As you can see here, very small thin slices. And what we're going to do is we're you don't want it too small. Um, I don't actually like to eat the ginger, so what we're gonna do is just throw it, throw it in there for the flavor and then scoop it up after. So just carrots. I've actually cut up a bunch already, but I want to make sure that you see the size of it. Again, we don't want it too small because they're gonna cook in it for a while and we don't want it to just melt away. So we're gonna let the chicken cook and we're gonna pull it out and then we're gonna add the dry ingredients and then the broth and coconut milk. We'll let that boil and once it starts boiling, maybe we can add the vegetables after. Right. And so I do it about an inch like this. And for the piece here, you can see it's kind of thick. I like to slice it in half. For the thicker part. Same thing with um, so the recipe calls for, you know, just like white potatoes, but I prefer um, sweet potatoes, we prefer sweet potatoes, so we like to add both. Um, but you really can use any, even red potatoes. Have we used red potatoes in this before? Probably, Probably not. not, but we can. Mm -hmm. like, whatever you have. <laughs> okay. Thank you. There we go. All right. Cut the ends. And then so I like to do it um, probably one inch as well, like the, the carrots. But the middle part tend to be thicker, so I tend to cut them in half. Oh, um, yeah. You don't have the other. And then cut these in half. There we go. While you do that, I'll do this. How's it going over here? I think it's going fine. What's your opinion? Yeah. Well, it looks good. Okay. You see all the juices? Yeah. It, you want to yeah. show the, the yeah. camera what the it's like now, kind of? Mm -hmm. Chicken. Chicken. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tilt it, Joe? Oh, tilt yes. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And you added garlic to it too, didn't yes. you? Yes, three or four cloves of garlic. Mm -hmm. All right. And while he does that, I'm gonna show you how to use the lemongrass stock. So I really love the smell of lemongrass. 
Um, I actually bought these. I wanted to go home and grab some from my dad's kitchen, but he used it all for some recent dish, and um, it's not, it's still growing, um, the new batch, and so I don't have that. But I love going to my dad's kitchen <laughs> um, uh, garden. But typically, is that where you get your vegetables? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, I would get these, the basils, and the lemongrass from my dad's um, garden, but he's... Um, He's I've never grown a new batch. That. So yeah. this, yeah. it's important that we only yeah. use this bottom part, and also it's important. That's why I use my stick. <laughs> I usually beat it a little bit because that's how you extract the flavor. And so I usually cut it into two inches um, long type of um, you know, sticks, just so um we can scoop it out easier later on because you don't eat this this what is other purely dish for do you flavors use lemongrass in i've never used a that. lot of our soups have lemongrass in them now that i'm thinking about it and also we marinate stuff with lemongrass all the time mm -hmm. there's lemongrass uh, grass chicken that i tend to make um, we can marinate pork chops with lemongrass so how i usually um we, it's very versatile but you, you can, don't eat it. But you, you can eat it. You oh. can eat it for those other dishes, but for this one, I mean, you don't eat it big pieces like this. If I marinate it, I would chop it into like tiny, tiny, tiny little okay. pieces like this and really finely chop it, then you can eat it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to eat it when it's this big. And we only want it for the flavor for mm -hmm. this particular dish. Um, and we don't eat it, but you can eat it if you want to. Look what a good job I did. I know, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> smells amazing. And so it asked for two stocks, and I did bring two, but I think this is more than plenty. It's a big stock anyway, so. Um, it, oh, I tend to cut in like half lengthwise as well, just so it's not too big when you're cooking. Gets more flavor from Yes, it. you're opening up the flavors. Yeah. I'm gonna add that chicken broth. Okay. Good. Oh, Before do you, you want to stir-fry this first? What about oh, that? Yeah. Yeah. Good catch. Good catch. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Do you have to put this in now? No, also? so this is only for garnish. Oh, so basically okay. when you, um, once um, you're done with everything, you put on a bowl, you put a couple of pieces on top. Oh, so it looks nice. Yeah. But, and you obviously can eat this. So for this, I cut again one, um, one inch and I would cut these bigger pieces into threes. Like so. Wow, look at this. All these veggies are going to go in it. Yeah. It's a lot. And there's uh, some browning on the bottom of the pan. The chicken broth is released that. You know? Yep. Nice flavor. So there, the recipe calls for one cup. I use more than that and um, a lot more than that. Do you think we'll need more? Because, just because um, we're... There's We've so got so much chicken and yeah, and um, all veggies. those vegetables. Yeah, so let's see. This thing is 32 ounces. We use um, we use two. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of soup. It's a big. But you pot. have a lot of vegetables too, and they'll need that. Exactly. And we'll let this come to a boil, and then uh, we'll add the coconut. So the broth is boiling, and we're going to add the ingredients. So I like to put rock sugar in. You don't have to. I just like the flavor of rock sugar. I usually put three. Where do you get rock sugar? In Asian markets. Actually, most of the ingredients I got. There's um, one Asian market in um, Lawrence I normally go to. There, there are also several um, in Lowell. Oh, great. So it depends on you know what's, what's um, available. And then we also have... Um, Brown sugar, so this is important to um, to add the sweet to it. We usually eyeball, so I don't actually go by the recipe. The recipe asks for two tablespoons of brown sugar. And what is the next ingredient? So that's the brown sugar right now, and then now we have the um, chicken, uh, the curry, the curry powder. So we usually put in three, um, two to three heaping. Okay, so this is different than what, yeah. oh, yes. Yep. So this is, um, again, we got this at the Asian market. Um, it's called. Uh, two, three of these? Yeah, just regular um, curry powder. 
this one because I got it at the Vietnamese store. I have two Vietnamese on it. <laughs> but it literally translated to Harry Potter. <laughs> Thank goodness I read and write. <laughs> I think that should be funny. So we put three because we like the smell of curry. You don't, you want, you know, less you curry to taste. Totally you can taste. taste, yeah. And then um, salt and pepper. Obviously, you do that to taste as well. And the fish sauce that calls for two tablespoons of the fish sauce. So we like to use this brand. It is the XO brand, again, in the Asian market. But I know they have a different brand in market basket okay. that I've used before. Works fine. About well, half a tablespoon of salt. Mm -hmm. Just do a little bit first, and then we can use it to do the flavor. Yeah. Uh, fish sauce is used often in yes, Vietnamese cuisine. It's very, very common in most of our dishes. Um, interestingly, my father does not eat fish sauce, even though it's oh, really? <laughs> this is like a non-going joke in our family. Okay, so you don't use it? No, we do, we do. Yeah. He just, um, he, we just don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> now he knows. Now he knows. How many, how much? Yeah, yeah. Two tablespoons. <laughs> It's like one of those things that he just prefers not to know. Yeah, right, right. right. And he's just like, but then he can't tell the difference. Right? <laughs> All right, so that's the fish sauce. And then pretty much after that, you just let it boil a little bit more, and then you add in the coconut milk. So we use one whole, we're going to use one whole can. Um, you, can you, you can buy this at Mark Bassett. Yeah, I've seen it. Shaking well. Let's see you want it. to shake it really well? Shook the shake it well. <laughs> um, you want to shake it really well because a lot of the it congeals sometimes. Yeah. It separates. Can you do me a favor and smell it? See if it smells good. Let's see. I'd love to do that. <laughs> Does it pop mm. past your nostrils, Kathy? <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Do you want me to stir it while you do something else? Uh, it's up to you. Well, we're going to add, yeah, just just add all the ingredients now. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll let that kind of simmer just a little bit. We're going to add everything. I have to ask you while we have the break to tell us about yourself and about coming here with your family. And yeah. I don't want to stand in front of you. Oh, no worries. No. Yeah, yeah. So wait, uh, tell us about when you came, you were five years old? Yes. OK. So I came here with my family when I was um, five and a half okay. <laughs> uh, in the early 90s. And we uh, came over as political refugees. Um, I know that some of us here, uh, some of the people in our group are uh, Vietnam vets, and we're very thankful for the work they did in Vietnam. But get, after the war happened, my dad served in the South Vietnamese side along U.S. soldiers. So when U.S. troops left Vietnam, people like him who served on, unfortunately, the losing side were forced into a re-education camp, and my dad was in there for eight years. Wow. And so given his time in the re-education camp, after he came out, he was completely blacklisted, couldn't find work, couldn't find a job. And um, under the humanitarian operation program, um, it was a refugee program at the time that the US government allowed people like my father, uh, former uh, detainees, to come over to the US with their children to mm -hmm. start our lives here. And we were very lucky. We came straight to the Merrimack Valley. Um, I went through the public school system, and I mean, even though I never grew up in Tewksbury, I played a lot of tennis against Tewksbury. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of friends over here, and so I'm um, very happy to be back and now representing uh, the 18th Essex District, which includes Tewksbury, North Andover, Andover, and Boxford. And as uh, a state representative, I am proud to be serving precincts 3 and 3A. And we're proud to have you. Thank happy you. To have you. Uh, but Nate and I, we live in Andover with our three dogs right over the border. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we come over here often. We're talking about the Thai food yeah, and other right, places right. that uh, we frequent here in, in Tewksbury. But we're very proud. I've been in office for uh, since January, and we've had a lot of office hours around here, at the both at the, uh, the library as well as the senior center. And we plan on doing 
doing a lot of uh, different things uh, over the summer as well to make sure that uh, people have access to me and know where to turn to if they need help. But we're so excited. We just finally passed a budget this week. Oh, that's <laughs> well, we yeah, we voted for it um, at the House on uh, well, uh, through the House and the Senate. And now it's waiting for the governor's signature. But we got a lot for Tuxbury, and I don't want to. Um, not have the right numbers, but I brought it here. We got $25,000, and I have to say, this is in full collaboration with our great Senator Barry Feingold, as well as my counterpart, Representative Dave Robertson. We worked very closely together as a delegation. We're very excited that we got this money together for the town. Um, it's $25,000 mm -hmm. for the addition of parking facilities and pedestrian crossings for the Livingston Street Recreation Area. Right. And we right. know that we have the, um, uh, fall festival there, so I'm excited for that. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then we got $75,000 for the fire department for municipal improvements, as well as $20,000 uh, to help with the cost of the new ambulance. So this is what we got earmarked specifically for Tewksbury, but not only that, we got uh, so much more in terms of infrastructure and improvements, and uh, we're working on a lot of different things that could affect um, Tewksbury. I'm on the housing committee, as well as the mental health committee and municipalities and personnel. But for housing, we want to make sure that people can afford to stay in this lovely community. And for mental health, of course, we have to deal with the opioid right, crisis. Right. And we're, we're putting a lot of money in for prevention as well as treatment. And we want to get feedback from the people as to what yeah. works and what doesn't and how we can do better and how we can work with our community to make sure that we are providing the resources that everyone needs. And this was a lot about the, our chief is helping with his two of the mental health issues. Yes, yeah, yeah that's great. Chief Chan, yeah. And we know that the Tewksbury Hospital does a lot of work in yes. the community, and we want to make sure that we're giving them the support that they need as well. But it's been great work coming in with uh, Representative Robertson and the Senator. Yes. We both so started. Doing a great job. Doing so we great see job. each other pretty often, yeah. and we're uh, we're thrilled to um, to do this work in collaboration with local elected officials. We reached out to them and said, what What do you need? Yeah. What, what are the projects that need funding? How can we help and how can we advocate? I know the new school's coming in. So uh, the delegation came, went to the M MSBA along with uh, mm -hmm. um, Dennis Franz uh, Francis. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. To, um, yeah. Uh, to advocate for funding and we got it, which is yeah. great. Well, we're proud of the job that you're doing. Thank you. And I'd love to hear Nate tell us about himself. Uh, I'm just a normal guy, <laughs> quiet. Who cooks? Cooks. Does all, they, you know, helps out as much as I can. Um, I like, to, you know, we, we have three dogs, like she mentioned. We go for walks, hikes. They love hiking. Yeah. We go, uh, you know, all the Harold Parker, exploring. Um, Do you see coyotes when you go there? We, we there's uh, coyotes in our yard uh, often enough, yeah, actually. Yeah, my yard too. Yeah. foxes mm -hmm. and deer, and the dogs yeah. chase all turkeys. of those. those yeah. yeah, and we had a turkey on our roof just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> And what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I work with optics and sensors and go to out of space uh, or farm farmers. and they, Cran well, they, The cranberry thing. Cranberry, right? yep. They like to, like, it's far more like inspection. And so um, they can use it for different, for crop disease, to help prevent crop disease. Or, or they can look, well, send them out of space, and they can monitor CO2 emissions. Um, so all, all sorts of things. And I sometimes mm -hmm. travel. I uh, went to Japan, uh, helped uh, install some software wow. systems in there. And, I, and your background is that you're an attorney. I yes. wanted to bring that up too. Yes. And it, may I ask how you two met? Oh, funny story. We actually went to high school together. He was oh, a year ahead. Wow. And we um, both graduated from Methuen oh, High wow. School mm -hmm. in the Merrimack Valley, yeah. but we didn't connect until 10 years after um, we went to high school together. But it was I was practicing as an attorney, and we met through friends, and mm -hmm. KP brought me back to the Merrimack Valley, and <laughs> then I became a yeah. <laughs> So it's all meant to be. It's all meant to be. I was living in a tiny apartment <laughs> in, uh, in Boston practicing, and then he's like, I have a house and three dogs. Oh, two yeah, dogs yeah. And two dogs at a time, and then we adopted one. And I was like, that sounds yeah. great. <laughs> 
And our, both of our families are local as well, and so they're both in the um, McLuhan. Now, may I interrupt you? Which, do you think it's time to do the grant? Yes, I think so. It's just. Should we toast the whole thing? Or just... This is probably good. Yeah, three. I put on broil. Yeah, you put on broil, right? There you go. All right. Now, what are you going to do next, Tron? So this is all plated. Oh, it's delicious. And you know. so we essentially, um, before when we gave the recipe at the end, definitely taste it and add, you know, more salt or pepper as you see fit. And um, I like to put in basil as garnish. But really, it's just a couple pieces, you know, on top. You can eat the basil as well, but it looks nice with the mm -hmm. green. Uh, and then we we normally eat this with, we, you can either eat this with um, chopsticks or you can have the traditional, you know, uh, knife, fork, spoon to... Uh, How do you eat the, the chicken soup? with the chopsticks? That it's a tricky? skill set oh, that you've yes. developed our whole lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's really not that hard. Uh, but really for this dish, you dip the, the bread into it and then uh, use a fork, okay. eat the chicken, yeah. you should be all set. Okay. It's a great dish for the <laughs> fall, like you said. But actually, I like it in the summer too, so yes. I'm going to eat some of this it, after. It <laughs> smells wonderful, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. Well, awesome. I meant to ask you, why am I wearing a yellow blouse? And I, it's lovely that you remember that I said that in Vietnam, the colors that we, uh, especially of the flag, uh, the yellow flag with the three red stripes, so yellow and red are very popular colors okay. in the that country. Was my, that was the flag. <laughs> and the earrings, too. I love yeah, that. Yeah, well, I'm all Vietnamese today. That's <laughs> <laughs> a shoe. So, um, well, this has been wonderful, and thank you to both of you, and thank you for all the work you're doing for us at the State House, and thank you for being such a great helped her <laughs> and for whatever you're doing with that, those mechanical engineering stuff. Thank you. And I want to thank Donna Gill, who's Come our producer in, and yes. keeps us organized, which is just Try. wonderful. Come Try. on in this way. Well, this is yeah. well, this is and then our two favorite, one well, of our two favorite <laughs> yeah, men. Well, he, more than that, the, he's the media director and his associate. And Brian Dorrington and Jason, Jason Marshall. Marshall. And also to Bayberry, who's kind enough to let us use their facility, which is yes, wonderful. That's great. The wonderful place and the beautiful kitchen. We're very fortunate to be here. And I'm Joan Unger. And thank you for watching us. And to, if you have any comments or suggestions, at the bottom of the screen will be the inf where you can contact. Brian and let him know what you'd like to view and how, what you think of our show. And we're always open. We are sensitive, but we're still open for, for criticism if you feel <laughs> that we need some. Well, that's okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching us. Thank you. Thank you.